Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. In this video, I'm going to talk about hive carriers. So in some of my videos, you guys have seen me use this homemade hive carrier here. Um, and one of you asked for some dimensions and some help building their own. So I'm going to make a video going over the exact dimensions of this. And it also got me to thinking about, you know, some people aren't welders. And um, what other methods would there be for them to, you know, other people to produce a hive carrier and so I brainstormed uh, one made out of wood and one made out of PVC pipe so we'll put those together today also so I'm gonna go over this in detail of how I built it and then we will actually build one out of wood and then build one out of PVC okay so let's get started a few things first about my hive carrier is that I built it designed it to to fit over the top of um, the telescoping cover that, that I have built the designs on. So it's bigger than a box. And therefore, if you're picking a single honey super up off of a flat surface, um, you're going to struggle a little bit with this particular design because it's just, it, it needs to fit over that lid and therefore causes um, some interesting inter interactions. So. To pick a single box up, one of your helpers is one of your, your helpers going to have to tip the box uh, before you can get the grip in in the corner. If you just saw how he did that, so that's that's how you're going to pick up a single box off of a flat surface. So all four of these bars are the same length, and they measure 20 inches. So there's four pieces that are 20 inches long, and that these measures here are these uh, side bars. There's going to be four pieces that are 28 inches long. I built this out of three quarter inch box tube. Uh, this is 16th wall or 065 wall thickness. I realize it's kind of rusty, but if you'll notice, when this folds together, this piece is going to sit down here on top of this weld, and this top is going to sit down on top of this weld. And so they're ground to accommodate the fillet weld that's in there. So these are these are not flat on the top, they're actually beveled, so when this folds together, it'll sit flat for storage. For the hinge, I just used some little pieces of three-quarter strap, I drilled a quarter-inch hole through them, put a quarter-inch bolt in, and then just spot welded the end of the quarter-inch bolt, uh, built a little rivet out of it. That's the hinge. So like I said, just said a little bit ago, the, the, I built this so that there would be some slack around a telescoping cover. So this dimension here is the important one. It's 24 inches by 20. And that fits over a telescoping cover that is 18 by 22 or thereabouts. Gives you an inch on each side. Okay, the tab here um, that holds the, the box, the V-box in the handle, um, is from this surface here is about 45 degrees so how I estimated that when it's holding the box I wanted it tipped up just slightly more than level and uh, and that was the angle that I came 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 up with there this is a two inches long about a half inch wide 3 16 thick I just priced the total cost of the material uh, the metal in this and it it comes out right in the neighborhood of twenty dollars for the steel um, it doesn't include welding wire or anything like that. So approximate cost of material for this particular um, hive carrier is right around $20. Let's go take a look at building a wooden one. Okay, so for the wooden one, I just went and purchased a 10-foot 2x6. Cost just under $12. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and make our, our hive carrier out of that. I've set up a stop lock here at 20 inches. I'm going to make two cuts. That'll give me my four crossbars. Okay, now I'm going to change the stop block to 28 inches. Okay, so that's for the long sides. Out of that uh, 10 foot board, I have exactly two feet left. I could have bought an eight. I didn't want to risk it. Okay, we're going to set the table saw up to cut down the center. 2 by 6 is 5 and a half inches wide, so I need to set the fence at 2 and 3 quarters, should be in the center of the saw. Okay, 
I'll rip all four of these down the center. Okay, so here's the two long pieces and then the two cross pieces that we just cut. The, the important dimension is, is that I need 12 inches to the center of the hinge to this bar. So because of the type of hinge that I'm going to use here, which is a piece of strap put on there, uh, this will butt against the other, uh, the other side of this. So I'm just going to mark out here 12 inches on each of these. And this is where I'll line that up to fasten it together. Okay, so I'm using a uh, nine by three inch uh, uh, exterior wood screws. Um, these are corrosion resistant. They, they ought to last a long time and they're, they're plenty stout. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, set this up. We'll pre-drill our corners to keep everything from splitting. I'll just go ahead and get this lined up and uh, countersink that put a screw in to keep everything lined up before I put my next screw in. Okay, well that's that half. I'll do the other. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna get the our little cleat here on the inside of our of our of our grip here. And what I've decided to use is just a couple of, of quarter inch lag bolts that I happen to have. These are quarter by one, a little longer wouldn't hurt anything. Um, to locate them, I'm just going to measure down here, uh, find the center. This is 20 inches, so 10 is the center, and then just one, about one inch on each side, so 9 and 11. I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill these holes. Okay, so I drilled these in at about a 45 degree angle, and uh, we'll just get them turned in here. Quarter inch lag screw uses a 7 16 socket or an end wrench. I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench to tighten this in. Okay, now we'll work on the hinge. Okay, so for the hinge, I'm just going to use a little uh, ratchet strap here, um, just the webbing off of it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off 16 inches and then I'll double that over for each hinge. So I'll, I'll have two pieces that are 16 inches long and, and I'll cut them off with my knife. So this hinge is going to go on here like this. So next thing I'm going to need is some little uh, pieces to clamp that down with. And so I think a little, a little piece of plywood on there, because um, we're going to drill through and bolt this, bolt this on here. I'll use, uh, I'll find some little piece of plywood that will work good for this. I'll cut up some four inch by inch and a half pieces. Okay, so you can see what I've done here is I've made a little, uh, a little plate to sandwich this strap in between um, and hold it in place and tight. And then what, I'll, what I have here is some uh, quarter inch by three and a half inch uh, carriage bolts. And so we'll drill a quarter inch hole through there and um, some flat washers and nuts to tighten everything down. Before I do that, I want to take some sandpaper and because this is a sharp edge, it'll, it could cut that strap. So I'm just going to round that um, out a little bit and make it uh, kind of a flowing curve so that it will have less tendency to eat into the, the strap on the lower end there. And the same thing for my 2 by 4s We'll just clean them off a little bit. So not sharp right there. We'll help it last a little bit longer. So I'm going to grab a clamp. I'm going to fold my strap up evenly. Place it under my little shim here. Get everything lined up. Smooth pieces are down. And I'm going to use this to clamp it right in the center. Okay, and then I'll grab my drill here, and uh, we'll put, what I have is a set of these, um, they're Ryobi. I think that other manufacturers make them, and they're, the, they're designed to fit in the quick change in the driver. It actually makes a longer drill bit that way. I'll have enough length to get all the way through uh, in one pass. Anyway, we'll put that in the drill and we'll drill a couple of holes. And we'll put a flat washer, lock washer, and nut on the bottom here. This, in order to pivot up, this is going to have to be back just a little bit. I just now occurred to me. 
um, in order for that to to fold it's going to need to be back uh, half the thickness of this material or the full thickness of that material so set that back uh, a quarter of an inch if you make the same mistake that I made here by putting this flush you could just take this off and, and cut off a quarter of an inch off the end and then bevel it again that's what I'll do to cure that so then the next thing that I'm going to need to do is get this all hooked together I'm going to finish this off on the floor we're going to get this all lined up in here about a half inch gap found a little skinny bar clamp parallel clamp and we'll tighten that right down here in the center. Keep everything lined up while we're drilling our holes. Here's our drill. Okay, so we'll put the put these screws in here. Okay, now we'll flip this over. We can put our flat washer. Okay. All right. Well, let's test this out. And see if it'll fold up. Put away. Not quite. I should trim a little bit more off of those, off the top of these pieces here to get it to fold up right. But it'll definitely fold up enough at this point to to pick up our uh, our hive. Well, let's go get the box and test it out. Okay. So. We'll set this box here, and then we'll uh, come up one side and the other. Be a different here. here. Let's try this this, uh, this way. Pretend it was on a bottom board. See how it fits on here two people working this will make it in under the handle, that handle. Oh, it's still considerably deeper. So, you're going to have to have a quite a bit of space under this for this to work, but once you get, so you can see the underneath side of that, if you've got clearance, like on a hive stand or something, then, then this will work to pick those up, but but be aware of that issue um, with this 2x4 style system. The little bolt heads are doing their job really well. I mean, that worked really good there as far as a, a lag. Set this on the bench there. Help me out. This is my partner. The bench is partner. But you can see here that this will this will work really good. Um, you know, it gives you a bunch of levers to pick them up and move them. The issue is going to be with this 2x4 system um, this dimension under here running into whatever hive stand you're using or whatever but as far as peeling a honey super off of a hive this is you know definitely got lots of room for that clearance this thing would work really really good um, and I just you know I just called the hardware store to find out how much an 8 foot 2 by 6 was they said it was 9 bucks um, the lag or the carriage bolts were just under 50 cents a piece so you know, all told, we're under fifteen dollars here for uh, for this for this carrier. It appears now, after I've done that, that that here where I built this. That if we have a total of an inch not in contact here, um, that's going to work beautifully. So, you know, if there's a if you got a full inch of space here, so pull that back. You know, when you're doing this, set this back. A half inch here and a half inch here and 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 this will this will then fold you know all the way up with with absolutely no problem um, but you can see here that you know it starts to tighten up on the strap is it's tightened up on the because there's just not enough slack there to roll that around but, all right we'll get started on the PVC okay so now I'm gonna work on this PVC one here um, I bought some new glue and, and some fittings here so my idea is, is to build the build, you know, the exact same thing here, um, but just out of a one inch PVC, uh, and we'll see how this all goes together. But 
idea is to just use T's here um, to hold the thing together. And then for the tab, I'm just going to, I thought I'd just like use a, use a T there for the tab. For the corners, we've got 90 degrees. And, uh, and then for the hinge here, um, what I think I'm going to do is, is I've got, got a couple of caps. And I think I'll drill a hole in, in the end of these caps. And then I'll just tie a, put a rope through it, tie a knot in it, both ends. And then uh, that'll be my hinge. So um, I'll go ahead and we'll start cutting this stuff up. I got my pipe vise out. We'll get this measured out, sawed off. Cut the PVC pipe. I just use a, a regular hand saw, um, whatever length we're going to use here. So about 20 feet, which will be way more than I need. We'll do a cost analysis of this when I'm done. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna work through this, and when I'm done, I'll compile all of the measurements for this when I'm done. Okay, so I'm gonna cut two 20-inch pieces for the tops of the, two, of the two handles here. So I'll measure out 20 inches. Okay, so handsaw works pretty good. Uh, cut pipe. Um, I'm a little bit crooked there, but it'll be fine. I know that 20 inches will go from this part all the way over to that part in the T. And so if I am using this for my deal here, if you look inside of this fitting, you can see that there's a ridge there and a ridge there. And if I subtract that amount, which is an inch and a half from my 20 inches, that gives me 18 and a half inches. If I split that 18 and a half in the middle, that should come out right. So we're going to go ahead and cut two pieces that are nine and a quarter. Okay, then I think what's the next most important thing to do is, is to go ahead and build our hinges before uh, we start cutting pipe for here to figure out um, what our length's going to be. So I'm going to want this, want the, I'm going to want this rope hinge to fold up so we can store it. And so I want it that long. So I have some 3 8 rope for the hinges. I'll drill these caps uh, with the 3 8 drill bit. Okay, this one here needs the end frayed. Melt it down a little bit here, tuned up. And then we'll shape it. Okay. Cap, and we'll tie a nice solid knot in it. Cap can go down there. Okay, so let's feed this through here, and make another knot in here. Okay, so these two now are, are the same. Looks like they're gonna be equal hinge when they're folded over. Uh, it'll work good for storage. Uh, I think we got this going our way. Plus an inch, 10 inches. So should be able to cut four pieces that are 10 inches and we should be on target. So this is gonna go here. This piece that's left over is 14, which looks like it's the perfect length or this upper portion of the handle. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing this together, and I'm gonna glue um, the two inside hinges together first, and then I'm gonna glue these together as a component, uh, setting my angle the way I want it, about 45 degrees on both pieces, and uh, then I'll glue, glue just the handle together, keeping my, uh, my fittings flat and level, and then I'll be able to just plug everything else together that way. So I'm gonna go get started on that and uh, I'll come back when I've got it all put together. All right, how do we do? Okay. Well, it folds up kind of like the old one. I'll go get a box and we'll see if these are gonna have to be trimmed with the saw or if they're gonna work the way they are. And this works pretty good except that um, it's holding it so far out that then it's just pivoting on this uh, 
on this T that I had in here. I, I trim these to where, you know, a little bit here. I had a slightly different angle on each side, so I ended up with a little bit different of a configuration on each one. Um, that one there's got a kind of a, a dual angle on it, and then this one here was just a, I was able to get a single angle. I should have probably measured that a little bit better, but, um, but they do a good job holding this. It is, a, it is flexible, it, you can feel it um, springing, and I, I'd have to do some more tests with it before I would recommend it at this point. All these parts for this were purchased at our local hardware store. I live out here in the sticks. Things can be kind of expensive, um, full price for all these fittings. Um, the pipe's a dollar a foot. The, uh, so that came out to 20 bucks. All these fittings totaled thirty dollars so it means I got fifty bucks into it for the plastic parts component of it I probably could have shaved that off if I'd have been able to um, get by with just the just the fourteen and a half feet that I or fifteen feet that I needed um, and the, the the two bottles of glue totaled um, those were also that was twenty bucks so um, I'm not going to count the cost of the piece of rope in there because I used you know about a foot each that two feet of that rope you know that that hank cost me eighteen dollars um, I'll use it other places so I'm not really going to include that cost but but there you go so seventy bucks if you include the cost of the glue I can use it later for other stuff um, if you already have that kind of stuff but just purchasing the pipes and pieces fifty dollars now, maybe you've got ha Habitat for Humanity near you or catch yard sales and can find these fittings and pipes and stuff. Uh, way more reasonable cost, um, state auctions, stuff like that. This may be a viable way for somebody to save a few bucks and, and put one of these together. Right now, it's cheaper to just pretty much just go buy one from, you know, Dayton or uh, Better Be or any of those guys. So, Okay, so down in the description, I'll include a, a Google document. Uh, that has the cut list for all three of these, um, the hardware list and materials and whatnot. And I'll also down in the description include a link to um, a video where I'm actually using this with a friend so you can kind of see how it works. Okay, so the conclusion was that the steel just works really good. Um, the wood, you know, I would put it into service to carry honey boxes around um, and feel comfortable about that. It's kind of blocky and bulky but it'll get the job done um, probably not super long term uh, the PVC one I'm up in the air about it I I do more testing on it and uh, remember these are only going to be as strong as your hinge material especially the the wooden one uh, find a high quality strap that's going to be the limiting factor on that and then um, it is it is all on its own pretty heavy so um, take those things into consideration if you decide to build one. Let me know in the comments if you do make one of these uh, specific designs, um, how it turned out, uh, if, especially if this turned out poorly, I want to let people know so they don't waste the 50 or $75 building one of these um, and, and find out that it's, it's absolute junk. So if you have uh, either comments, either pro or against this, be sure and leave them down there and everybody check to see you know how this progresses. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.